Yeah, uh, we're going to be joined, we are joined rather, by a national security expert, Ryan Morrow from uh, clarionproject.org. Mr. Morrow is also a researcher for the Reform Party of Syria. Thank you for being here, sir. Thanks we for having appreciate me. it. All right, so as, as a security expert, what are your thoughts on the president's strategy right now? It appeared that he was going to launch some type of military strike on his own, but he backed off from that and went to Congress. What does this mean for what's going on in Syria right now? Well, right now, this is all about the credibility of the United States, because when you say that there's a red line that you're not going to allow an enemy government to cross, and then they do cross it in such a dramatic fashion, then you have to respond. And now the question for President Obama is, is does he strike now and he decided against that, or is he waiting for Congress to come out of recess and then get authorization? He ultimately decided that it was better to consult with Congress. They come back on September 9th, and then you still have to have debate and have to have it passed. So. So uh, we do have some time between now and when these strikes occur, and I do think they're going to occur. You've got two million refugees right now that have fled Syria. Four million people in the country have been displaced. It's one in four people in Syria is directly affected by this. Uh, talk about what this strike, what an airstrike is going to mean for them, and can it just be a strike? Will it end there? Well, according to the leaks that are coming out, it's going to be about two or three days. And you're in direct contact with the opposition, which is where you're getting a lot of your information firsthand. Sure. Right. And the opposition, the people that are trying to overthrow Bashar Assad, the people that are being massacred on a daily basis, they're very complex and they're very mixed. And that's the problem that the United States has, is that you have radical Islamic forces among them, unfortunately, and then you also have more secular good guys, the type that are saying, where is the United States? This has been going on for two years. We want support so that we can beat al-Qaeda and beat the Muslim Brotherhood, but they haven't gotten any. And so as a result, the main fighting force against the dictatorship on the ground right now is al-Qaeda. Well, what, tell me what happens, though, if by some means uh, Bashar Assad is deposed. Uh, I think you and your colleagues wrote at one point that deposing uh, Assad could actually open the door for the Muslim Brotherhood. Uh, and is that something that we really want in Syria right now? Oh, absolutely not. You don't want the Muslim Brotherhood taking power anywhere, especially in Syria. Um, but there is a backlash against the Muslim Brotherhood that's happening throughout the entire region because of what's happened in Egypt. They've seen what they govern like, and they don't like it. They're all a bunch of talk. And so they are losing support within Syria. But again, the main problem is that the more moderate forces that would like to ally with the United States, they're out-armed, they're out-financed, they're out-organized. They don't have the international support that the Muslim Brotherhood and al-Qaeda-type forces get from around the entire region. Region. And so any strategy that we have towards Syria has to include that component, and that's really missing right now. You have a lot of congressional members who are saying that their constituency doesn't support a strike here. The Americans are reluctant to get involved in yet another overseas war that perhaps they don't quite understand between factions that they don't understand, and especially since this is such a tinderbox of a region. Um, can this be sold to the American people? Well, I think the argument has to be made that al-Qaeda and the enemies of the United States are winning right now. That's not just about Bashar Assad. That having this battlefield on the ground where al-Qaeda can go and recruit and radicalize people, send people to get battle experience, uh, that's worth millions to them. And so this is working out quite well for them. And so the United States has to have some type of strategy towards Syria. But this is really a microcosm of the great debate in America right now about the proper place for America in the world, about is it smarter for us to just stick to ourselves and, and not get involved in these affairs? Or do we have a responsibility to act when we hear about humanitarian catastrophes like that are happening in Syria that most Americans still don't understand uh, how extreme it is? I mean, it's really hard. And we're seeing pictures of warships there. We know that they're stationed in the Persian Gulf and in the Mediterranean and they're ready to strike. But what about troops on the ground? Are we going to be involving American men and women on the ground in this type of incursion? Is this going to be a boots on the ground yeah. operation? No. Definitely not, and if it were to be, that would be a gift to Iran and Syria because that's a war that they can win. That's a war that they know how to fight. And we also have to remember that they sponsor Hezbollah, which according to many experts is actually more powerful than Al-Qaeda, and they do have networks here in the United States. All, All right. right, Ryan, we want to thank you, and of course we're going to be talking to you throughout the morning. We right, appreciate thank it. Thank you. Ryan Morrow. All right.